Hey, welcome back. It's Carter from Bitsby Trippin. I'm going to try a new type of video, and I'm going to call it straight to the point. Um, straight to the point of the different subjects that we'll come up with. It's a kind of we can call it a different series. I've done whiteboard series. I've tried to do live streams. I've tried to do things, but you know, in the past week we were gone. We were doing. I had to go to um, you know a family event, and with that travel, it gave me some time to reflect at some of the emails and stuff that we get. And one common theme is coming around. That common theme is what in the hell is mining? Why do people get compensated for the activity of mining how does it work like genuinely and there's a ton of great content out there on the web um, both from forums and YouTube channels that try to explain it from a technical level and then you have a whole other groups that look at it from just the financial side and give you a forecast and where they think things are going what teams have good projects that kind of thing but like a genuine conversation of what is it and how how do you gain value out of the activity of mining what's like what's it really doing so what i'm going to try to do is give you guys a quick primer on what i go through with folks when i'm sitting down with them individually off the camera and hopefully explain it in a way that just kind of makes sense to you guys um, that are just coming into the mining scene or just trying to figure out what it is so i'll start it with when I usually start the conversation, I explain kind of why, you know, what gives value. Because people want to know right to the chase, like what, what gives it value? Well, what gives it value is the fact that you're performing a service. And all of the cryptocurrencies, it doesn't matter if it's Bitcoin, Litecoin, the mineable GPU coins like Ethereum or Zcash, uh, Ubik, Expanse, all these different currencies that you can actually mine with GPUs or ASIC hardware. What you're doing is you're actually holding up the network. You are your miner is performing a service. That's all it's doing. At the end of the day, there's a lot of math that goes in the background, but it is performing a service. And for that service, you are getting a token. You're getting a token of whatever coin you're mining. So if you have it pointed to Zcash, you're you're mining rig to Zcash. You're getting compensated in Zcash for that. Uh, if you're using a service such as like well like Nice Hash had. And there's some other services coming out that's kind of like Nice Hash, which people could broker or purchase your mining rigs uh, where they're getting pointed to, and then they would compensate you in Bitcoin. Uh, that was kind of a, a bridged way to make Bitcoin. But your your machines are being are are providing a service. That's at the end. Of the day, that's the simplest answer. For that service, you're compensated in a coin. Um, and circumstantially, especially now and uh, most recently. Those coins are worth money. They're worth fiat currency in your local exchanges, for be it USD or if you're in another part of the world, you can exchange those tokens that you earn for your machine performing that service for your fiat currency. Um, now there's tons of different angles on this, meaning there's people that will look at it from a perspective of being very libertarian and saying, hey, this is a, a pulling off the mantle of big government and and control because you can earn you can have a machine that performs a service and earn a currency and then exchange that currency with another person and there are no third parties there's no bank there's no government there's nobody involved in the middle right it's a transact from point to point that's part of the evolution of the technology the blockchain technology in general Bitcoin, Litecoin, any of these different currencies that are out there that facilitate that. And then the network facilitates the transaction. So that's kind of the so what factor is the fact that you can create a commerce between people. Now, that was the original vision of Satoshi and all that. And if you follow a lot of the folks that are out there and you follow, you know, where you get I kind of the indoctrinated people somebody like a Roger Veer that says, hey, it was a utility, it's freedom, it's all this stuff. While that would have been technically the case if you're looking at like a Bitcoin white paper, um, it started to kind of already evolve. It's evolved into a store of value. It has, a, it has the features of a limited supply. And that limited supply in a, in a slow trickle uh, deflationary model to where it's in it's adding coins at a deflationary rate where they're they're going to get less and less added to the ecosystem 
that creates a an ecosystem of a store of value. And that's why Bitcoin, if people are trying to figure out like why is Bitcoin going up, it's because people are starting to understand what it does, what it can do from a utility. I agree with that. But it is a limited supply. There's only so many. And there's only so many that in our lifetimes are going to be introduced into the system. So it has that ability to grow exponentially if people want to acquire it. There's not, it's not rocket science. It is a limited supply and people want it. That's going to drive price up. Regardless, rather, of anybody manipulating it or trying to buy and sell and future trade and all that other stuff, it comes down to the very simple dynamics of just supply and demand. Not in demand. As more people want it, it's going to drive price up. Um, and that, if you look at across all the currencies, that's what's really driving price action. So, recap. You have a mining rig. It is performing a service. For that service, you are being compensated. The service that it's providing is a validation of the transactions on a ledger network. On, on the actual, when you transact on that network, the point-to-point -point transaction that's occurring gets validated by the mining network. In addition, part of its compensation me methodology that, that cryptocurrency uses is based on its block time. With Ethereum, it's every 15 seconds thereabouts. With Bitcoin, it's every 10 minutes. Between that block time, it is distributing, it's adding new coins into the, it's inflate, an inflationary nature of adding new coins into the mix. And the lucky pools or miners that, that are able to mint that next block and post those transactions to the actual uh, blockchain get rewarded in the new currency that's inflated into the system. Um, and then all the mining fees and all that are included on in each of those block times. So, your machines are performing an, a, a service, they're paid. I keep giving that rehash. And, I, and most of the time when I'm talking to people, I keep beating on that same kind of concept to, to really hone it into people that, that it is not just building it out of thin air. It's performing a service that has utility from a transactional nature. The supply and demand side of it help drive the price. There are other activities, especially on the, C the ICO side, that are right now being held as securities, by and large, by most people. Like if there's an ICO out there, um, if you, you look at Bancor, you look at IOTA, or any of these other currencies that were originally Ethereum that were, that were ICO'd from that, they made an ERC-20 token on behalf of their roadmap of what they're trying to provide that will then eventually work on the Ethereum network or work on a, a, some fork of Ethereum. At the end of the day, it comes down to those are tokens that are securities um, and some that will be used as a utility where like like Augur, where you'll actually use Augur uh, to do predictive uh, analysis and you'll, you'll spend it like a currency to the system to perform the function. Uh, same thing with Golem. Some of the currencies are like branches, if you were to think of that, that you can use as a utility when those platforms become online. But by and large, most of them are just a security. And it's the the value of those, it comes back into a supply dynamic, you know, supply demand dynamic of, you know, people believe in the project and they speculate the price up. That is all that, that's, guys, that's as simple as it gets. That's the system. So now that we know that the mining rig performs a service and for that you get a token, what are the major components that are involved in that? And if you're just, this is this video is very targeted for an entry level, just never seen the space of what's involved. But to give you a very top level, we're gonna just use a kind of a three letter acronym, which I would say ECP. ECP is your equipment, your config, and your variable cost, which are your, like your power and your other components that are part of that. With your equipment, we're talking the mining rig. If you're doing Bitcoin, Litecoin, Dash, any of those currencies like that, you're gonna need something called an ASIC. ASICs are um, relatively expensive and use quite a bit of power, um, and you're competing on a much higher uh, kind of commercial scale. Uh, when competing on those kind of networks. So your rewards, why 
on paper look pretty decent, it does expire faster. The equipment expires faster on a schedule. So within six to eight months, sometimes earlier, the machines become where they don't put an output worth powering them. Um, when you get into GPU mining, which would be like uh, Zcash or uh, Expanse, uh, Ubik, um, Ethereum, which is very popular, those use graphics cards and GPU hardware that you can buy. Um, and that's what essentially our channel helps provide people kind of guidance on. Those, that's other equipment that you can purchase and allows, you know, I would call it the grassroots approach. Anybody can be part of that. Anybody in the world, anybody that can have access to graphics cards and normal computer technology can participate. And that's kind of a huge so what factor, right? Like if you're looking at getting involved in getting cryptocurrency, you can purchase cryptocurrency go out to a Coinbase or go out to, you know, a place that's local, like local bits and purchase your cryptocurrency, then move that currency to an exchange and exchange it for other currencies. Or alternatively, you could build a mining rig and mine it yourself and have uh, that, exp you know, get cryptocurrency that way. Then let's, let's go back to the acronyms. You have your technical configuration. Your technical configuration would be your OS involved. That could be Windows or Linux. Within that, what mining software are you going to use? That's another con technical consideration that you have to have. Once you get those configured, you have to have a wallet. A wallet for the coin that you're going to do. If you're going to do Monero and you're going to use your mining rig to mine Monero, you're going to need a Monero wallet. So that mining rig is at, hooked up to that platform, that service. Essentially, it starts mining and performing the proof of work algorithm for Monero, CryptoNight, for that network, and you are compensated for that machine providing that service. Um, that will go to your wallet. You can now exchange that currency that you earn over to an exchange and move it to another currency. So all of that transactional nature is all done without the need of a third party. That's part of that activity. Now, you can use a third-party exchange, right, to where you send that money to an exchange. But that is, that's the so what. When people really come back to us and go, like, I, I don't get it. Why would people mine? Well, when people that mine may want to just earn the currency themselves versus going out and purchasing it with fiat. You know, they'll buy a mining rig. And then they'll hook it up to a particular network. They'll perform that service of proof of work for that particular network. And then they'll get compensated in that, that currency that they're mining. Some people will sell that hash power. And that hash power, that means your rig can get repointed to whatever currency that somebody buying that hash power wants to, to point it to. And then you're paid in, in Bitcoin. And then you can just store Bitcoin that way. Again, all of these things not requiring necessarily a third party for you to go sign up with or for them to control um, but gives you that freedom to be part of that network and then you know earn that cryptocurrency that way um, and if we come back back to the other acronyms of the the three-part piece there that i was just talking about we, if we look at the the p and that which would be the the power and the variable costs that are associated with the mining rig so you have your mining rig you have your config and then you have the 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 care and feeding for that mining rig is feeding it power, giving it uh, you know, proper air conditioning or proper ventilation. Um, and then you have to have network you know, connected to the internet. Not a huge amount of, I mean, you could get by with ISDN. It doesn't matter. You, you don't need a huge network um, bandwidth requirement for mining. But those are the main components, your equipment, your, your configuration, and your variable costs that Kind of care and feed for the rig you know you got to feed it power and give it a uh, network connection and then you're part of the cryptocurrency mining network and you point your rig to whatever currency that you want to mine um and are compensated for that effort that's the that's the so what guys when you're looking at it and you're like i don't get it performance servers get paid for it um and as people want the currency our people use it from a utility standpoint. Our people speculate against its price and store it as value. You are just upholding that network. That's what you're doing. It's not illegal. You can do it, you can earn it. You can exchange it for other currencies. You can exchange it for fiat, right? Um, 
this video we're not going to get into strategies of how to make it more profitable or any of that kind of stuff this is just straight to the point hopefully this video has been good for you guys i think a conversation style like this is good for the ecosystem hopefully this has provided you guys another look at you know what mining is if you like this style of kind of straight and to the point let me know put it down in the description below we can make more videos about this. I'd like to see some of the other categories you guys would like to talk about. I try to engage this kind of conversation in our live streams, but I think in an episode format, it allows a quick video that's you know less than 10 minutes to be put together and for you guys to share this kind of stuff out to people. And hopefully it becomes uh, more, uh, creates more conversation that we can help try to answer. Like, subscribe. We have uh, a, a good website that we're trying to make sure that's updated. I'll kind of put a graphic here up of what we've been working on with regards to an episode database um, and also a, a pretty detailed troubleshooting and resource database for everybody that's trying to get into the cryptocurrency scene. Um, again, we're not even, the, our website doesn't even have like AdSense on it right now. Most of the stuff we get is from donations from you guys. We do value that. We try to put as much information as possible out there. We have a great Discord community. Stay tuned. We'll have a, another episode coming up here soon. And uh, we'll have a live stream later this week for you guys. Thanks.